Let me do a quick audio check once it comes up. All right, so we've got Google Photos and YouTube DL, which is more do, general, general do tech do YouTube, Do you want to do YouTube DL first? Um, either way. Both of them are bad news, so it's not like we can, we can make it any easier. It's 253, episode 253. Let's start with YouTube DL first. Okay. All right. Let me know when we're ready. I am ready. Okay. Let me sit up. <clears throat> okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. This is episode 253. I'm Haim. Tom is that way. Hi. Oh, that way. I'm mirrored. Anyway, so, and then whatever he does in uh, in production there. But anyway, it's been a long time, mainly because election stuff, and we don't want to dip into the election security politics nonsense of it. Uh, even in the WhatsApp group, we are starting to avoid that because... There's lots of different views, and election security is a thing that needs to happen. But but there are other smarter people who can explain it. There's a whole village at DEF CON. You can, you can read up about it, but it has been a thing people have been screaming about for years. Election security, election security, election security. So, I mean, we're specifically talking about uh, voting in person at a machine and everything else, but and we've covered this a little bit before, but we wanted to stay far, far away from it because this is a security podcast and not a political podcast. So. The, the only politics we are going to mention explicitly on this show uh, involves boneless buffalo wings. They are saucy not wings. Nugs. They should not be called wings. They are saucy nugs. They are chicken nuggets. Yes. And I am guilty of liking my saucy nugs, but hey, I am never, never going to say that saucy nugs aren't delicious. Myself, I love a good sweet barbecue with a little bit of heat on it. Slather those things like I want the breading to be crispy, but I want the sauce just drowning in them. Uh, just mm, man, but they're not wings. They have no relation to buffalo wings. They're saucy nugs. One of my students said, "If why." I don't care that it's half price because I can go to Burger King and get eight for a dollar. <laughs> so how many chicken nuggets do you want? And I'm like, but those are better. He goes, how? <laughs> he just delivered, somebody hand delivers it to you with the sauce that you can buy and you can do this. And I mean, it still resonates to this day every time I order boneless anyway, or whatever, whatever we want to call them, expensive chicken nuggets. So well, that was the problem. So I would I usually go on uh, on Friday nights after ten o'clock. They have half price appetizers, and my place of choice is Buffalo Wild Wings. It's just because they have half price appetizers, and that's how I would contact uh, deal with my social my needing to be social. And then we had this, and I thought that, and so now what we do is we order and we pick up and we sit socially distant in someone's backyard, not at ten o'clock, but. Over the summer, we did it on when they had deals, but this has been tough for all of us. And as cases spike, as you're seeing, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do Thanksgiving, but at least in New Jersey, they're telling you to unfortunately not have it and not have Christmas and not have all these things. And it's tough, but let's get this under control and then we can figure this out. Hopefully, this will get under control. Here's to hoping. I'm hoping that this vaccine that they're talking about actually works. But anyway, for the last, I don't know, we learned a whole bunch of math in the last week, but there's been not really much security news. And then all of a sudden today, two, or last week, but really, and today, a lot of stuff happens. So the first one is a little, I mean, if you, you should have heard about this, but if you haven't, we're going to explain it, is YouTube DL. So YouTube DL is this, uh, is this script that, you can run on the command line and it will download YouTube videos, not just YouTube videos, but basically any media, as long as you match the parameters, it will download it for you and save it. And, and it's just awesome because 
having YouTube videos on the download is really easy and really necessary for a lot of different applications. Basically, uh, they were throwing a, a um, DMCA or takedown notice saying that they're violating what's the Copyright Act, whatever Copyright Act it is, and they need to cease and desist. Yeah, so the Recording Industry Artists Association of America, and I'm leaving out expletives because this is a PG, sometimes PG-13 related podcast, but basically the Recording Industry sent a takedown notice to the, uh, not even to the website, to the developer account for YouTube DL on GitHub. So now that Git repository all the official forks of that GitHub repository are now inaccessible thanks to the RIAA. Um, the RIAA is kind of infamous in the United, in the United States for uh, suing and taking down virtually any technology that they don't agree with. Um, these are the same people that if they had the legal right to destroy CD writers, uh, cassette tape players, uh, or yakbacks, if you remember that toy from when you were a kid, they would. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I am absolutely biased against the RIAA. And YouTube DL is a, an, an absolute gem of technology. Um, so it's, it's open source. It's developed in public. Uh, and it doesn't have a license. It's actually dedicated to the public domain. Um, it uses something called the unlicensed, which literally means you can use this anywhere, forever as much as you want commercially or not you can give us credit or you don't have to and it's truly open and free software it's honestly a marvel of not only decent engineering but uh, a marvel of licensing itself i mean we use it for the show when we're we done do. here uh you hit the script to do it you download it to your computer and then you throw it into the, in the into the cloud and i grab it it's so we literally use it for the show and this is a little more than uh, BitTorrent is only used for downloading Linux distributions and distributing the Bible. It's the, it's, there's a whole lot of things. My school banned YouTube for a while uh, until, I don't want to say fairly recently, probably at least six years ago, they finally unbanned it. But there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. And a lot of, and most of it is, I mean, YouTube got rid of all their copy, all their copy stuff, all their copy protected office clips and everything else. Now, a lot of it, probably 95% of it is, uh, is non-licensed and the other 5% is through Vivo for the music artists. And that's unfortunately what, what they're, they're claiming. They're claiming that people are stealing the songs and watching the music videos and everything else. Uh, yeah. The... I, I wish I could claim to be unbiased uh, in, in this takedown. I'm not. I'm clearly on the side of YouTube DL with this one. Uh, YouTube DL is also used by archivists, by uh, people who are trying to evade censorship. Uh, there's lots of companies out there who will send fake D uh, DMCA notices to take down controversial videos that have reviews or other content critical of the company um, that they don't want being spread. Um, people have used YouTube DL before uh, to grab these videos because it's clear when something, it's probably going to get taken down. Uh, the, there's a uh, video game company pretty famous um, due to this now called Konami, uh, which took down several insider reports of things that were happening uh, in their company and, and around one of their more prominent game developers. And thanks to YouTube DL, the video was spread far and wide uh, while it was being taken off the internet by fake, uh, or I should say illegitimate DMCA claims. Um, so the, the good news is that you can still download YouTube DL. As a matter of fact, uh, they did just put out an update recently, uh, which you can download directly from their website. So their website's still up. Um, and what this has done is it's kicked off the uh, now famous Streisand effect of the internet. Uh, where basically the Streisand effect is when somebody tries to censor something or hide it on the internet, the internet in general, almost like a swarm of antibodies um, just comes together to spread whatever the trivial piece of information that's trying to be censored, they spread it far and wide. So now you can get a YouTube DL 
you know, a, a copy of the script or the source code or the Git repository or anything dealing with YouTube DL is spread all over the internet. It's still being developed and the RIAA hasn't done anything except drive the development process underground. Um, so, you know, in the end, is YouTube DL going to be fine? Yeah, obviously. Um, is it easy to develop for it now without a centralized place? No, not not really, unfortunately. GitHub was that one collective place where people gathered together to hack on this software, but now it's going to happen in secret. It's going to happen in the dark. And uh, thanks to the free and open licensing, all that work is going to be spread far and wide, and they're not going to be able to stop it. So, yeah, it's inconvenient for people who are trying to do things legitimately, but frankly, it's not really going to stop much. Uh, I just updated YouTube DL today and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll use it to download the show here in the next 20 minutes or so. I'm just trying to figure out. So if, if they don't do anything, I guess then they go to uh, the owner of GitHub. They, they send a cease and this, uh, DMCA to GitHub. GitHub says, no, they, they end up going to Microsoft and now they, they're, you're going to take out so Microsoft. The they did not send to my knowledge did not the RAA did not send anything to the YouTube DL maintainers. Um, they just sent a DMCA notice straight to GitHub and GitHub took it down. Um, the way the DMCA is implemented in most big places in the internet, most popular places, is that you can send a DMCA notice, which in YouTube's case will instantly terminate that video, make it unavailable. Um, or or take all the revenue from that video and then give it to the company claiming the content. Um, so, which means that you can use the DMCA itself as a censorship tool. You don't like something, make a DMCA request against it. Oh, was that request invalid? Was it illegal? Was it any of these things? There's not really a punishment mechanism for filing false DMCA requests uh, without somebody actually suing the person who did it. Uh, which means that companies can make any kind of frivolous DMCA request uh, or a DMCA takedown of any content that they find objectionable. Frankly, the, the entire law is uh, problematic. We'll, we'll put it that way. Well, basically I'm what really, you're saying really is, trying to keep... well, the issue, the issue becomes, okay, so, so um, news programs have this problem. So they're showing a video, it gets instantly flagged. YouTube doesn't want to argue it. So what they say is they take it down and then you have to fight YouTube and basically it's a Python script that takes it down and it's probably a human that has to deal with it later. So let's take it down. The problem is news shows, nobody's going to care about it three weeks later or a month later or whatever it is. And if you rack up three strikes in that time period or six or whatever it is, you can get kicked off YouTube and, and that's the problem. But what I find so stupid is my friend's wedding video they did a dance that was to uh, My Heart Will Go On. And it was one of those, it got taken down. And it's like, it got taken down like eight, nine years later. It was so yeah. strange. Or or what I love is the you have, uh, you have uh, teenage daughters or whatever singing in a sleepover video that they're putting on. And they're lip syncing or they're singing really, really bad. And they're like, no, this is a public performance. Or the other one, a ringtone, a ringtone on a bus. You have to pay a licensing fee for. It's just, it's. I get what they're doing. I get that they want to protect their their interests. I really, really do. But it's you're you're finding the one thing. It's this is bad because it aids encryption is bad because a thief may use it incorrectly. It's the same type of idea. We can't have encryption because the drug dealers or the mortgage fraud people or the child pornographers are going to use this, and therefore we can't do it. And it's like no, it, pe bad people do bad things. The the only thing these DMCA takedown notices against software are going to do because it, you know let's let's not split hairs. Hackers and nerds and people who live on the internet, we're going to do what we're going to do. And yeah, I mean, I'm including myself in this too, because on my website, you can find uh, ancient at this point, but you can find copies of the popcorn time software. I made sure to archive those and put them up on my site. Uh, now, is that software illegal? Sure. According to the DMCA, it is. 
Do I care? No, not really. And I am not in a unique position uh, amongst nerds that live on the internet. Um, the only thing this does is just make things slightly more inconvenient, but it doesn't actually solve anything. The RAAA can claim victory and parade around all they want, but the only thing they've done is just make YouTube DL more resistant. There are now more copies of YouTube DL out and around on the internet than there ever were before. And as a matter of fact, thanks to the news cycles on this thing, uh, more and more people are downloading and using this utility than were before. So it's really a, a self-defeating prophecy. Um, or or now people really... are going to make websites that use it and then fill it up with ads and malware and people are going to go to all those sites and have the problem. Yeah. So I, I use YouTube DL all the time for a wide variety of things, both, you know, downloading high quality videos so I can, you know, cut it up and make reviews and analysis of it, uh, downloading this show, for instance, uh, or even we wanted the ability to back up our YouTube channel just in case YouTube does what they do best and blow something up. Um, so I used YouTube DL to literally download all of the N30 Networks videos and put them in a storage location for safekeeping like that's not a nefarious act i i mean we we literally we own the content we are producing the content right now we're not using youtube dl to download music videos we're using it for archival and perfectly fair use purposes uh but the raaa saw you know a couple use cases that didn't fit their nice neat picture of reality and decided to take action and frankly that's disgusting I mean, I I don't think we're going to hear any updates to this, just I think because everyone's just going to ignore it. So we can't say we'll, we'll update when we hear something. It's if you want to go download it now, find a way to download it. But, but like you said, I, I don't think, I think development's going to stall for a little bit, but I think that's about it. Yeah. Um, so just, I mean, we try to to look at the nuance in a situation. We We really try to not take sides with these things. Um, I'm not going to act like I'm neutral here. I'm not. Uh, you can go to youtube-dl.org uh, and get yourself a copy of YouTube DL. You can get the source code in, in a gzipped tarball. Uh, you can get youtube-dl.exe right there or YouTube DL if you're just on a Mac or on a, another Unix system and use it wherever you want. Uh, so go out there, have fun and download some videos. I mean, I have it installed. I may have used it once or twice, but it's one of those. I would like to have it and I don't want to have to go hunting for it. But anyway, so we're halfway and we're talking about, we were talking about Google and everything like that. Google has killed an actual product that many, many, many people are going to find near and dear to their hearts. And they didn't kill it. So I'll, I'll stop there. But YouTube photos, I'll give you a second. YouTube photos is now going to go paid Google photos. Oh you, yeah. Well, the same company, <laughs> Google photos, sorry. Google photos is now going paid asterisk. Not it's not fully paid. It's weird, but for the most part is let's first start. Google photos was this app. You took photos with your phone or wherever, and it uploaded it to the cloud and you had a really nice UI. It did some machine learning and, and stuff, and it was simple to use. I, I think everyone loved it. They gave you unlimited free, whatever they called high quality uh, storage for no charge. And basically it took over the internet. That was what everyone used. Today, they said starting June 1st, 2021, you get 15 gigs free, and then you have to pony up for Google One, which is their storage solution, essentially saying, we now care about the money. We don't actually want your photos unless you pay us. Uh, they, yeah, so they didn't kill it. They just they just gave you something else that you have to explain to all your non-tech friends on why they're getting notices that they have to pay. Yeah, so... The, the details around this is starting on June 1st, and I'm reading this directly from 9to5google.com. Um, so starting June 1st, docs, sheets, slides, drawing forms, and Jamboard files. What is a Jamboard file? Anyway. Oh, I found out today. So Jamboard <laughs> is a way to make digital uh, copies, like worksheets for kids who are remote learning. Okay. All right. Good to know. 
So yes. So uh, all those will count towards your free 15 gigabytes of allotted storage uh, or any additional storage provided through Google One. Um, like photos, existing files will not count and be exempted. So basically starting on June 1st, 2021, any new photos that you add to Google Photos will start counting up towards that 15 gig limit. Uh, whereas before they had like, I know originally it was like free unlimited backups of the original sized photos, which is pretty cool. Um, then they pulled that back a little bit and like, well, we're only going to do unlimited backup for like your high quality stuff, not the originals, just we'll, we'll compress it a little bit, but hey, they'll still look good. Um, and it's... Uh, so, so I actually printed out two photos. I printed out the raw shot on my full frame Sony A7, and I printed out the whatever they called compressed. And I did this on three different files, and I gave it to people. And to be honest, it was 50-50. People couldn't tell the difference, so they were just picking. So essentially, from the high-quality raw that was compressed to the JPEG, they could not tell the difference. And... And I say is as a backup, okay, if you can't tell the difference, then compress it all you want. As long as you can't tell the difference, what do I care? Because it's a backup. I mean, yes, you always want to have the original quality, but if you have it somewhere else and something happens, at least you have the backup. So that was the, the high quality. And I think they said anything under 16 uh, megs would be, un would be original. Anything over 16 megs, which at that point, Every iPhone photo was full size because they weren't using the full 16 megs. So it was just your raw files that were being, I think it was something over 12 megapixels eventually got compressed. Okay. Cameras didn't have that. Now they're getting it. People are taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos and they're starting to realize storage is getting to be, even though it's cheap, it's still expensive. I think they said they have 4 trillion photos that they have to deal with. So I understand what they're doing. The problem is, is that you build this as a free service. You got people there. And now what, are, what do you expect people to do other than buy your, your Google One service, which, which again, they say 15 gigs, but it's 15 gigs across everything. That's across your, your email, which they remember they said it was unlimited. Remember the unlimited Gmail? Uh, then they said docs, your sheets and, and doc files wouldn't count. Now those will start counting. So now it's literally, you get 15 gigs, other, otherwise you have to pay. And it's just really annoying that it's, it's, as people said, it's a bait and switch. They got you hooked and now they're saying, pay for it. Yeah, and, and keep, keep in mind that this is one of the end states of the, um, sorry about that, I almost kicked something over. Um, this is uh, one of the end states of the, uh, technology paradigm where, hey, it's a free service. You can use this. It's unlimited. It's free. And yeah, Google Photos was unlimited when they needed a bunch of photos to build their, you know, photo recognition training data sets, right? When when they needed a bunch of stuff to power their machine learning. And now they're like, ah, oh, no, we've got, we've got plenty of photos or the cost is now outweighing the benefit. If you're not paying for something, you are not a consumer. You are a product and you will be treated as such. The problem is um, now you're going to pay for it and you're still the product. Which exactly. is now, now we're moving into you have to do it yourself to not be the product. Yeah. So they will only screw you over a little bit and not fully. But it's it's somebody – I mean, remember, we talked about this. I moved to the iPhone, and why did I move? Because this was the writing of the wall. I'm just two years later than Tom on this. But here is a service that we actually use. Remember, two weeks ago, they killed the Ring Secure system. That was their hardware stuff. So if you went out and bought all those window units and the, and the dongles and everything else, they're essentially killing that. And that's a lot of money to a lot of people. Now, Google Photos is a big deal. It's not Google Glass for the nerds like Tom and I who had it. It's or Google Reader again for the nerds or whatever it is. Now it's hitting a product that everyone uses. Yeah. And uh, some some additional stuff here uh, to mention is that uh, Google said if you are inactive in one or more of these services for two years, Google might delete your content uh where you're inactive and uh if you're over your storage limit for two years google might delete your content across gmail drive and photos and that's 
kind of outlandish. Uh, they did say that they will notify you multiple times before they do that, but yikes, this is looking bad. Uh, now, for, for other things, um, it looks like some of the Pixel phones won't actually be included in these product changes because they did advertise the Pixel phones specifically as having unlimited storage. Um, which unlimited storage you get depends on which Pixel phone you have. Um, and if they decide to take that away, there could be class action lawsuits about selling you one thing and then taking it back later. So for now, uh, let's see, it looks like, yes, the original Pixel, uh, Pixel, Pixel 2, 3, Pixel 3a, um, and then the Pixel 4a, 4, 5g, and 5 looks like do not advertise the unlimited backup. So if you've got a Pixel 1, 2, 3, or 3a, you should be okay for at least uploading in high quality. So that also ends at some point. There? Yes, it, it, it also ends after like four years or whatever it is. Basically, yeah. the life cycle of the phone and... And again, it's it's fine if you want to make this a mausoleum and say, okay, all my photos up to the year of June 2021 are here and then I'm going to move services, which you can do, but I don't think that's the workflow you want. I, I mean, I think it's, it's like what we keep on saying that Google Photos is a perfectly respectable backup where you can move your photos there and you don't have to worry and everything else. Now it's one of those, you have to pay something and maybe you're on android maybe you do your school your 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 kid's school uses google and maybe that's what you want to buy google i've had google one service it's it's a bucket of storage it's it's twenty dollars for a year gets you more than enough and you can split it and everything else there's nothing specifically wrong and then i mean if you're in the google ecosystem that's fine and if you're in the apple ecosystem icloud is probably where you want to go uh my problem is my wife is in Dropbox and I don't have a system, but I do not like Dropbox. So now we have to pay for two systems. And and of course, this is what they all want. $20 a year for Google for all their services. If you're okay with that, that's, I mean, that's a really good price. I'm not gonna argue with you. Uh, if, you're on a, if you're on an Apple to have better iCloud storage for 20 bucks a year to get you whatever, that's fine too if you're on Microsoft, but... It's one of those now they're, again, they're going after more and more of that subscription money that not that many people want to, in fact, spend. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's more general tech stuff and not necessarily security related, but I understand when tech people and business decision makers say we're not building anything on top of Google because this kind of stuff happens and i know a lot of companies deprecate stuff and remove functionality and shutter products and even close down entire companies but uh, google seems to have this really nasty trend or at least a very nasty public image uh, around just turning off the products that you fall in love with it's th again this is another reason why i i could have picked up a pixel 5 and i said you know what I'm sure the Pixel phones will exist, but I don't know. I don't know how much longer they're going to exist. I don't know. Like we saw Google released a VPN the other day with their Google One program. But, oh, you have to be you have to be on the two terabyte a year plan for a hundred bucks a year. Two terabyte storage for a hundred bucks a year to get this. And that's a lot of money for a lot of people. They obviously want you to get the hundred gigs for $20, but... Again, it's one of those, if you're in the Google ecosystem, that's fine. But again, if you're putting in the cloud, be ready for it, for the company to start either charging you more or whatever else. Um, and again, it's, it's, I don't like subscription services. I understand people need to eat, but it's one of those, tell me the upfront cost. I rather, people are saying, make the iPhone $50 more and include all the iCloud space for the gigabytes of that your phone has. So if you buy a 128 gigabit, uh, gigabyte iPhone or 256, it should come with that much cloud storage to do the backup. But yeah, uh, I, I personally paid for uh, the extra iCloud storage because 
I ran into that after after my first year with my phone. I got a notification saying, "Hey, you've got like ten percent left of this stuff. You don't have to buy it, but we're not going to back up any of this other like old content. We're just going to move the window forward." Um, and I said, "No, nah, I want everything." So. Yeah, I paid for it. I paid my 20 bucks a year, but it was nice because it was upfront. It wasn't this bait and switch thing. It was literally, hey, you get this much for free. If you go beyond that, you have to pay. And I think that was a really nice upfront, here's the cost sort of deal. Uh, whereas this Google thing, I've been relying on Google Photos to back up all my stuff across all of my devices for, you know, uh, just under a decade. I mean, how long has Google Photos been around? Because I, I remember, I think I first turned this on. Oh, or it's not, it hasn't like, been around that long. Not yeah. 10 years. No, not, not 10 years, but under 10 years. Like eight, seven? It's been around yeah. for a while. Um, and now now I've got, you know, seven or so years worth of pictures to figure out where am I going to put this? Am I, am I going to put it, you know, all in iCloud? Am I going to shift it that direction? Or... Am I just going to go hack something together with cloud storage? Like there's a lot of different ways you can go. The good news is if you join our WhatsApp group, you can chat about it. Uh, so if you want, you know, tips, pointers to figure out what we're doing. Um, if you want to go a little bit more in depth than this show does on whatever topic uh, floats your boat, uh, except selling us Bitcoins, that topic, no. no um, that. Then, uh, then join the WhatsApp group and we'd be happy to chat about it. Again, it's the, we don't have, we, this broke today at one, like around one o'clock. So we don't really have a suggestion yet. I'm in this boat. Tom's in this boat. Mm -hmm. I have a server at home. I can do that. Um, other than that, I don't exactly know what I'm going to do. The good news is I do have about seven months to figure this out, but it's unfortunate that I have to do it. Cause not only do I have to do it for myself, everyone I told about Google photos, I have to deal with. And that's a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. So. Um, I need to figure out what, I, what I'm going to do for my grandmother. Uh, she's been on Android phones forever, and Google Photos is perfect. Like, we literally, I remember moving her from Picasa and Picasa web albums over to Google Photos, and now I need to figure out what do I do. So. Again, you got, you got burned by Picasa. I loved Picasa. Yeah, it was great. It was and, honestly one of the best desktop applications I have used in the Windows XP era. It was fantastic. And then they're like, well, we got this new software, Google Photos, which incorporates all of that, and you're going to love it, which we did, but it wasn't Picasa, and we got yeah. we got used to it, and now they're killing that too. So it's tough. Yep. So I realized that this episode was, a, was light on security stuff. It was more tech stuff but hey if you want to force this into a security angle um you know availability is one of those angles and and we're currently being ddosed by uh record label associations and google themselves so look the problem is like we said election news has been covering everything and we don't want to wait into the politics and there's no and everyone's still quarantined so when all that goes away hopefully we'll get some more security news so yeah. Anyway, uh, we are way over time, but at that point, we're just going to say bye, and hopefully we'll be back next week. I'll see you okay. then. Bye, everybody. Okay, okay, we should come back next week, because the week after is going to be Thanksgiving.